Amen. Well, it's good to see everybody this evening. Let's start our service by singing hymn number 413, Love Lifted Me. Love Lifted Me. And if you can, when we sing Love Lifted Me, stand on your tippy toes. Every time you sing Love Lifted Me, we'll sing the first and the last. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, from the waters lifted me, now safe am I. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. On the last, souls in danger look above, Jesus completely saves. He will lift you by his love out of the angry waves. He's the master of the sea, billows his will obey. He, your savior, wants to be, be saved today. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help, love lifted me, amen. All right, some of your lifters are broken, I don't know why, but uh, anyway, and so do you stand on the love or the lift? The, the, okay, all right. Some of you were not in rhythm then, all right? Just want to let you know. Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome you that are online. Thank you for joining with us. I hope you lifted when you were supposed to lift as well. But uh, I'm so very thankful for the love of God. Amen? Amen. I tell you, um, I pray that we'll always focus on that, especially as we deal with hard days and difficult times because uh, the love of God will lift you up, that is for sure. Let's go ahead and bow our heads with a prayer. Father, thank you that we have uh, such a God as you, that loved us so much that you sent your only begotten Son. And Father, may we truly always consider Christ, lest we be wearied and faint in our, our minds. So Lord, bless us, I pray, tonight as we gather around your word once more and for the fellowship in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. You may be seated. And now let's sing hymn number 335. 335 showers of blessings. We're going to sing all four of the verses. There shall be showers of blessing. This is the promise of love. There shall be seasons refreshing sent from the Savior above. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but from the showers we plead. There shall be showers of blessing, precious reviving again. Over the hills and the valleys, sound of abundance of rain. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead. There shall be showers of blessing, send them upon us, O Lord. Grant to us now a refreshing, come and now honor thy word. Showers of blessings, showers of blessings we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead on the last. There shall be showers of blessing, oh that today they might fall. 
Now as to God we're confessing. Now as showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead. Ushers, let's go ahead and come tonight. Let's get ready to take an offering. All right, praise the Lord. Let's go ahead and bow our heads. Uh, Brother Tim, would you lead us tonight? Amen. God bless you tonight. You get Amen. Let's stand one more time. We're going to sing in Christ alone. Let's stand to sing in Christ alone. We're going to sing two verses, but after this last verse, we're going to sing that same last verse a cappella. So let's sing in Christ alone. My hope is found. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are stilled, when striving cease. My comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. No guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell. Scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Clear in the power of Christ, I'll stand. Let's sing the last verse a cappella. No guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ, I'll stand. Good singing. You may be seated. All right, take your Bible tonight and turn to the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 32. If 
you remember last Sunday night, um, we left you with Moses up on the mount and we told you that God had given him something and that was two stones of tablet or two tablets of stone and um, there he wrote, God wrote on these two uh, stones uh, what he wanted. Uh, the Decalogue, the, in other words, the Ten Commandments, and whatever else. And uh, so that is where Moses is at, up on the high part of the mountain. This mountain is covered with a cloud. And uh, the people, no doubt, are afraid because of the voice the thundering, the lightning. And uh, they said to Moses, you go and you talk to God. We don't want to talk to him uh, lest we die. And so that is where Moses is at. And if you know, we know that based upon the text that we read last Sunday night, he was there 40 days and 40 nights, a long time. What do you think the people of Israel were doing? Waiting, waiting. Now, I don't know if uh, time had elapsed. I don't know if Moses, uh, in other words, if the people knew, okay, 40 days and 40 nights, okay, it's time for him to come down. I don't know about... All of that. But we do know that it was longer than they wanted to wait. Take your Bible, if you're hopefully there, Exodus chapter 32. Begin in verse 1. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount. Now, how they knew that he delayed, I'm not quite sure. So, uh, Obviously, they were judging it based upon something. And this was too long. According to what the Bible says, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron. At this particular time, there are two people in charge when Moses is not there. Aaron is one of them. Her is the other one. And uh, so Aaron is there and, and uh, he's the one that's having to make decisions now because Moses is not there. And so the people gathered themselves together, not to worship the Lord, not for a sweet time, but to have a discussion with Aaron. So here we go. The people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, up, make us, what's the word, folks? God's which shall go before us. In other words, you remember God Jehovah and when, when, when he was working amongst them with Moses, there, were, there was a cloud and pillar of a fire went before them, went behind them. And so we find here, up make us gods which shall go before us for as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we want not what is become of him. And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings, which are in the ears of your wives and your sons and your daughters, and bring them unto me. And all the people break off the golden earrings, which were in their ears, and brought them unto Aaron. And he received them at their hand and fashioned it with a, gro a graving tool after he had made it a mol molten calf. And they said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And when Aaron saw it, 
He built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. And so, well, let me read verse 6 and then we'll pray and then I'll get into it. And they rose up early in the morning, offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to what? Play. Let us pray. Father, thank you tonight for the word of God. And you know, I pray, Lord, that would to God that under the sound of my voice, that, dear God, maybe there's one that, the truth be known, they too are playing. Maybe they just don't realize it. Lord, I pray. Have your will and way in the service tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. They rose up to play. Aaron, and tonight's message is really not about his leadership. That's a whole totally different message. But <clears throat> I will say this. Uh, uh, obviously, Aaron did not do right. He misled the people. And, uh, you know, he should, have, he should have gone the other direction. But some say that maybe he was trying to appease the people. In other words, maybe all that he was trying to do was, you know, they were, I mean, you know, you know the people, don't you? Come on. You know how bad they can get. And so, you know, maybe if I just kind of go along with them a little bit, they'll shut it down. Surely they'll see how senseless this is. I mean, sh surely they're not going to actually worship this thing. Well, whatever the reason might be, Aaron obviously did wrong. And, uh, and we'll get to that at some other sermon. But we find, though, that, and it is interesting, first of all, what was done? In other words, why was it, hey, give us your gold and let me put together an image? Why in the world did that take place? And the people were in favor of it. They liked that. They, they somehow assumed that this would take the place of God and what God was, was doing. Some even believe that <clears throat> it wasn't that Aaron was trying to lead the children of Israel into idolatry, which by the way, this is what this is, but that he just changed the form. In other words, instead of what God was using before, we're gonna use this molten calf, we're gonna use this image of a, of a cow and this is, this is God. No, in other words, all they've done is change the image, but it's still God. It's just a different form now. Where it was a cloud at, you know, during the day and a pillar of fire at night, now it's just a cow. It's a bull. It's, a, it's, it's something like that. And so... Some, you know, some, some writers say that, that, you know, he, because all he's trying to do is to appease the people and hopefully by the time this actually runs its course, they'll give that up and everything will be fine. You know, by that time, Moses will be back and we'll be okay. Well, obviously that wasn't the case. But the interesting thing, and this is our message tonight and, and quite a, by the way, chapter 32 is an interesting chapter because how it starts out and how it ends is not pretty at all. A lot of people die this day because of what happens. But I want you to notice something. In verse 7, the Bible says this, And the Lord said unto Moses, Go, get thee down, in other words, where is Moses? Well, he's doing what he's supposed to do on the mount. And 
But apparently God is quite aware, and by the way, he always is, of what's going on. Never think that God doesn't know what you're doing. Never somehow get into your mind that God either doesn't see or he doesn't care. Because whether or not you and I are aware of it, God is very much interested and loves his children. And he very much cares about everything you do. Now, you and I, we may can justify everything that we do, but the truth of the matter is, it is to the Lord we, are, we will give an account. And that you and I ought to judge everything we do based upon what the Lord says. Oh, by the way, it was Moses who, before he ascended up to the mount to get all the things that he wanted from God, he had already told the people the law of God. Do you know what was included in that law? The Ten Commandments. And one of the first Ten Commandments, one of the first, the first, by the way, is thou shalt have no other gods before me, nor make any, here it goes, graven images. So it's not that the children of Israel did not know, nor the fact that Aaron, he did not, you know, he knew as well what was right. And so... <clears throat> But we find, though, according to verse number 7, And the Lord said unto Moses, Go get thee down, for thy people, which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt, have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way, which I commanded them. And they have made a, them a molten calf, and have worshipped it, and have sacrificed thereunto, and said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Now therefore let me alone, that my Wrath may wax hot against them, and that I may consume them, and I will make of thee a great nation. Well, without a doubt, God is very much upset with what is going on. But tonight, I'd like to focus, if you don't mind, on when the Lord said, They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I have commanded them. How quickly they have gone in another direction. How quickly, and to the Lord, he said, and he, he described it as quickly. Boy, it didn't take any time at all to turn from the way. They knew the way, but how quickly it was that they turned aside to another God. Now, folks, I sometimes wonder, are we not the same way? And, and without a doubt, I truly believe the nature of, 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 our, you know, of us is, is that truly how quickly we can turn aside as well and follow other, other, other things, whether it's our own desires or whatever the case may be. It was the Apostle Paul that wrote and says, I marvel that you're so soon removed from him who hath called you unto another gospel. I'm surprised that you, that you move so quickly. And, and so maybe it, you know, that's, that's our tendency, is it not? And, and I sometimes wonder that, that you, know, you and I, we could so quickly get out of the way. In other words, we could so quickly leave the path that God would have us to go if you and I are not careful. First of all, we find that, at least according to the first verses of, of chapter 32, that, and I don't know who it was, it doesn't necessarily give us, but they gathered together unto Aaron. Now, I, I, I can only imagine there was probably one that says, you know what, this is not right. Where is that Moses guy? You know what, I think we need to do something. You know, this, this, this is, you know, we need to find another leader. We need to find somebody who's here. I don't know what it was, but somebody was talking. And they came to a conclusion, says, you know what, we need, to, we, need to, we need to talk to Aaron and we need to get somebody else. And lo and behold, 
they do. And, and sadly enough, you know, isn't it so hard to wait upon God? Isn't it so hard to be patient when, when it seems like nothing's happening? You're waiting and you're waiting. You, you're not quite sure what's, what's going to happen and how long and all that stuff. If you and I are not careful, what do we do? We get very impatient. We do the same thing with, with our God as far as in our own lives, don't we? Things are not happening. God, we want this changed and we want it changed now. And, we, and so what happened? We become so accessible. We, we become so easy. Well, maybe there's another way. And all God wants you to do is simply be faithful right there where you're at. No, no, you don't need another God. You don't need uh, another way. You don't need another program. You just need to be faithful. Just keep on doing what you're doing. Wait, God says. But it's hard to wait, isn't it? And we feel so much better, don't we, when we take the bull by the horns, if you know what I mean, and do something. Hardest thing is just, just, just to sit and wait. Wait. But what do I do in the meantime, Lord? Do what I've told you to do. You just be faithful. We somehow don't think that's enough. But these people did not think it was enough. And so apparently they got to the point where we're through waiting. I hope and pray you never get to the point where you're through waiting on God. I promise you, you'll be tempted to do that. And by the way, I found a lot of people leave, leave God, leave church, stop praying, stop, stop doing what God would have them to do because they're tired of waiting. They want more excitement in their lives. They want, they want, they want something else that for, apparently for so long it's been there, they've been longing for it, and now they've got the opportunity. What do you mean, preacher? Well, I'm glad you ask because I want you to notice something. The Bible says here, look at verse 1. The people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Make us, what? Gods. And lo and behold, do you know what God is made? Or what, what image is made? The Bible calls it a calf. You know, and obviously, in, in kind of looking at the history of this, and I don't, know, I don't know anything about the history of Egypt and its deities, but did you know that there is a calf, a bull, if you please, that is a deity of Egypt? It's called Apis, and it is worshipped. And I sometimes wonder, while the children of Israel were slaves in Egypt, were they not exposed to the religion of Egypt? And, and how many times, no doubt, they probably saw this, and they probably saw the Egyptians worshiping, and probably the uh, Jews were probably forced to either participate or to watch or whatever the case may be. And this was done however, how often they worshiped. You know, without a doubt, because we are in this world, please don't ever think that the world doesn't influence your life because it does. And so... Of all the things they could have chosen, of all the things that could have come out of it, you know what they chose? Something that they were accustomed to in Egypt. By the way, if you, if you, study, if you study this and if you've paid attention to the journey that we've, many times the children of Israel, a lot of times referred back to Egypt and says we would have been better there. Hey, we would, have not have, we would have not have starved if we were still in Egypt. I mean, they kept referring back to Egypt. The truth of the matter is, you know, there was more of Egypt on, on the children of Israel than they cared to admit. And so now that Moses is gone and they didn't know what to do, hey, let's, let's revert back to one of those gods that we saw the Egyptians serving. 
And so a molten calf was made, a cow-like or a bull-like animal. And after it was polished and, and shaped up or whatever the case may be, then Aaron says, here it is. Well, the children of Israel knew exactly what it was because they seen it over and over again. And maybe Aaron thought, well, maybe if I give them something that they were aware of, then they would make them feel better and they'd quit complaining. Again, we're not talking about Aaron's leadership because he did, he really messed up. But the thing that I want to, the thing that I want to emphasize here, at least point out, and that is this. What can we do in our own lives as Christians? We live in the world, and the thing about it is, whether we realize it or not, the world does influence us in more ways than we can count. And a lot of times, we don't even realize it. That is, until things like this happen. And, and you know, and I tell you, I, I would stop and say this, you, you know, you better be careful what you desire, because you may get it. You better be careful that even though nobody else knows secretly you're desiring things of this world, but you're a good Christian, right? So you're able to fake it. You're able to hide it. But I promise you, when the bottom all falls out in your life, maybe, you'll run to that which you desire. And by the way, who are we supposed to be desiring? God. Remember this morning in the message. Without a doubt, we don't see any Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in this account right here at all. They, the children of Israel wanted, hey, no, no, we'll take that God. Apparently, anything will do. Well, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, there wasn't anything that will do. Even if our God does not deliver us, know this, O king, we're not going to bow down. And what did God, someone would have rose up and says, no, 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 no. Hey, we, you can trust what God says. God will do what he says. We're just going to hang on. We're going to be patient. You know, sometimes we need people in our lives to come along and just say that. Hey, no, 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 that's, that's terrible thinking. Let's, no, 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 uh, let, let's let God do what he wants to. Let's be faithful to God. Someone might say, well, well, preacher, what do we need to do? I mean, I, I, I don't care. Everything's falling apart in my life. Man, what should I do? Sunday's coming up. What should I do? How about just go to church and just pray? How about go to church and lift your voice up unto God? Well, I feel like a hypocrite if I go to church because things are bad in my life. Can I tell you, the church is full of them. Let's just keep coming. See, our focus ought to be not how you and I feel, but based upon what God has said, and we ought to focus on simply obeying that. Our world falls apart. We don't feel like praying, do we? You know what you should do? <laughs> Take it to the Lord. Learn to pray. Even when we don't like it. Yeah, but, but come on. My, <clears throat> my family's falling apart. I, I'm about to lose my job. I don't know what it is, but you know what it is. And it's so irritating to the fact that I don't want to do anything. Or maybe I'd like to just do something else. Oh, that will make me feel better. Let me just do something else. Did you know if you do something else, then you're going to get out of the way? You do know that, don't you? What do you mean out of the way, preacher? In other words, out of the path that God would have you to travel. Sometimes it's hard to stay where God has put you. But it's the right way. We don't know what happened to Moses. God will take care of him. You just simply be faithful. God won't abandon you. By the way, these are things that Aaron should have told him. But he didn't. But the thing about it is, they were so bent. And unfortunately, Aaron gave them what they wanted. And they identified with it. They, they knew it. Oh yeah, this is a good one. We can, we, we can worship this. And apparently in their minds, this took the place of God. 
This will lead us. These idols, these images, they will lead us, is what they thought. So often, sometimes we're so quick and we easily justify putting something else in the place of what God would have us to do. And it is sad. Well, we find <clears throat> that the image is made. And yet, if we want to get God's opinion on this subject matter, we find that everything that Aaron has done, everything that the children of Israel have done up to this point, according to what God says, it is sin. It is wrong. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go get thee down for thy people which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt hath corrupted themselves. You know, we're so, we can so easily somehow justify why we do what we do. But according to the Lord, they have corrupted themselves. By the way, anytime you replace God with anything in your life, it's not good. They have corrupted themselves. And according to what, obviously, not only did they corrupt themselves, but I want you to notice the word that is used here, how quickly they did it. How quickly they did it. I mean, come on, if there's anyone that knew anything about the, the, the power of God, the, the faithfulness of God, it should have been the children of Israel. They've seen God do some amazing things. Yet how quickly they got out of the way. <clears throat> Tonight, how do you stay in the way? Well, listen to what the Bible says. I want you to at least understand where I'm coming from. The Bible says, and they have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. How do you stay in the way? How do you stay faithful to God and not get out of the way? Please understand, our nature, sadly enough, is to do it quickly. In other words, it doesn't take much, is, is what it's trying to say, to get us out of the way. You know, by the way, when the Bible paints the picture of man, it isn't a very pretty picture. You know, sometimes we think more highly of ourselves than we, than we ought to. We really think that we're, and I'm not trying to bust anyone's bubbles, I really am not, because I'm, I'm a part of that human race as well, so I'm talking about myself. And I know me, I, you don't have to convince me. I know my, myself and how, how, you know, I know uh, the temptation that always lies before me. I know that, that, you know, I could easily go one direction or the other. I know me. And the Lord does. And I bet you know you. We don't want to put it out on so everyone can hear it and everyone can, you know, we want people to think what we want them of ourselves, Right? We don't really want people to know our shortcomings. But God does. And the thing about it is, you and I must realize we're not as wonderful as I think I am. We're not. And that, by the way, that helps us stay humble. That helps us to realize, I know, boy, I tell you, I'm a mess and I need him. In other words, it helps us to humble ourselves because I promise you there are going to be events in your life that comes and, and if you're not, not careful, we'll actually think, you know, I'm not that bad. You know what, God? I got this. No problem. No, we always need the Lord. And the thing about it is not only, not only should we not think, think too highly of ourselves, but the truth of the matter is we, we ought to believe that what God says is important. Come on, don't, don't step out of the way because, you know, in other words, what a major mistake we make when we don't take seriously what God says. Oh, so you can go and, and, uh, and, and forsake, you know, you know uh, forsake your wife or, 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 uh, or you know, you, know, you could care less about what, what the Bible says and, and, you, and your life shows it. You know, if you and I are not careful, we can say, yep, I know what God says. I know God wants me to go that way. I tell you, he's, he's, he's said that to me over and over again, but I'm going to go this way. 
How can you do that? And not be so convicted of what God just said. I mean, can, can you tonight go this direction and not be convicted? Because I'll, I'll tell you this, if you go this direction and there is no conviction of you going this direction, there's a problem. You see, tonight, according to what the Bible says, God's children would be convicted because he loves you. He would discipline you if you go this direction. Now, he didn't say he would stop you, but I tell you, he would convict you. And by the way, aren't you glad for the grace of God? Aren't you thankful for God, uh, uh, that still small voice and, and, God, and the Spirit of God convicting us and all that? I tell you, praise the Lord for that. You and I ought to hoot and holler because that tells you, hey, you belong to me and I love you. But somehow now that we always interpret it the wrong way. It all, it's almost as if, man, I tell you, when people get over here, it's not unusual for them to say, God doesn't love me. Now that's sad. But also, you know, every time, every time I'm, I'm trying to do what I want to do, you know, I'm trying to do the best that I can. And, and I tell you, I feel miserable when I go this way. And I'm tired of feeling miserable, somebody says. Well, you ought to thank God that you're miserable if that's the hand of God in your life. Because God's trying to do what? He's trying to turn you back into the way. Folks, I've been here long enough to see too many people get out of the way. And somehow or another, they justify it. And, and, and even when it's all said and done, you'll see them on the street. They'll act as if nothing ever happened. Uh, by the way, it still happened. And I believe the only way they're going to get right with God is by acknowledging their sin and getting right. Not just forgetting about it. By the way, I don't think they can forget about it. Because the Spirit of God will bring it up again. Because forgiveness isn't just forgetting about it. If I could walk over here, I'm sorry, Gary, but you're sitting right here. So I could walk over here to Gary and just slap the fire out of him. I'm not going to do that, even though your wife paid me, but I'm not going to do that. I could go over and slap the fire out of him. And he says, Preacher, why'd you do that? I says, because I just don't like you. I just hit you. And, and then I walk away. Well, he begins to think about it and it hurt him. And you know what? Every time I see him now, he, he, he doesn't want to talk. He wants to avoid me. And yet I act as if nothing's wrong. Well, truth of the matter is, if I'm saved, God's already been convicting my heart. I should go and say, I'm sorry, Gary. Why? Because God loves me. And he's convicted me. I should make it right. You see, my friend, according to what God says, how quickly they're out of the way. I sometimes wonder, how quick do we get out of the way? How quick do we get out of his path when it comes to marriage, when it comes to, you know, everything of our lives? And so God said to Moses, Moses, up, get you down. Because your people have done wrong. You know, the people that, that, that uh, you've helped lead out of Egypt. And they've served other gods now. And so Moses goes down, by the way. You know, this is, uh, is, is going to be a pattern in Moses' life. 
he gets angry. Oh, by the way, and I'm not going to deal with it tonight, but it's almost, it, it, it appears anyway, which it doesn't happen, but it appears that God says, God says to Moses, Moses, uh, you go down because I am, I am hot fired mad at these people and I'm just going to get rid of them. And by the way, God is holy, isn't he? Everything God does, God would have been justified in doing what he did. But Moses says, oh, no, don't, don't kill them. You know, because if you, know, if you kill them, then, then the testimony is going to be that you only brought them out of Egypt just so that you can kill them. And, and everyone's going to think how bad of a God you are. And so according to what the Bible says, that God repented. By the way, God never repents of sin because he never does sin. But he did change his mind. Of course, God knew all of that anyway. Because it wasn't for God's sake, it was for Moses' sake. To be the leader that he, that he, that he was and that he should be. And so... Moses goes down, and so instead of God is angry, guess who's angry? Moses is. He is so angry, what does he do with the tablets? Boof! He throws them down out of anger, and they bust all apart. Then, as you know, the story and as it goes, my goodness, and I don't... I don't, I cannot fathom what this would have been like. Now, please get in, keep in mind, there's at least a million people, people here. And Moses basically draws a line and basically says, who's ever on the Lord's side, step over. The Levi clan steps over which means everyone else doesn't choose that. Now, I don't, I don't know the math, and, and I, don't, I cannot say all the reasons why, but it was on that day, according at least to what the Bible says, 3,000 men died that day because the Levites took a sword and went through the camp. And those that were opposed died that day. And then the rest of them, you know what happened? Moses had the calf grounded up into a powder and put it into the water and made everybody else drink it. I'm sure that was some yucky tasting water. I want you to notice this and I'll close. <clears throat> the Bible says in verse 14 the Lord repented of the evil which he had brought to do unto his people and Moses turned and went down from the mount verse 15 and the two tablets of the testimony were in his hands the tablets were written on both, both their sides uh, on the one side and on the other were they written and the tablets were the work of God. And the writing was the writing of God, graven upon the tablets or tables. And when Joshua heard the noise of the people as they shouted, he said unto Moses, there is a noise of war in the camp. In other words, as Moses and Aaron, or uh, uh, Joshua, as they were coming down, they heard as it were, somebody in battle and uh i mean that's what joshua thought anyway listen to what the bible says oh by the way the sound that they were they heard was not a battle it was the people hooting hollering because they were playing because by the way you know when you worship the true god it will lead you in the right way it will lead you in the right direction. But if you worship and serve any other God, it will lead you to play. It will lead you to play. 
when, I, when I'm referring to playing, I'm talk, not talking about a good play. This is a bad play. And the Bible says in verse 18, and he said, it is not the voice of them that shout for mastery. In other words, Joshua thought, hey, they must have been in battle and they're shouting for victory as if they won. Yay, we won. Moses said, no, that's not it. Neither is it the voice of them that cry for being overcome, but the noise of them that sing, do I hear. It came to pass as soon as he came nigh into the camp that he saw the calf and the dancing. I wonder where they got the dancing from. They saw the Egyptians doing it. They saw how they were worshiping their God. Can you imagine the sight? Here they are not only worshiping an idol, worshiping an image, but they're also, the, the performance of the worship was also in idolatry. And the thing about it is, supposedly, and, and, and again, Aaron probably, well, this just has taken the place of God. It's really God. It's just doing it the Egyptian way. That's all. No. And it came to pass, as soon as he came nigh into the camp, that he saw the calf and the dancing, and Moses' anger waxed hot, and he cast the tables out of his hand and break them beneath the mount. And of course, you know exactly what has happened. By the way, Moses confronts Aaron and says, you have done wrong. You have caused Israel to sin. By the way, leadership's important. Leaders are not like everybody else. Oh, I know, I know they are, but they have a different task. They have a different calling. And therefore, they have different responsibilities. You can't act like everybody else. Do you hear what I said? You cannot act like everybody else. You're supposed to be a leader. You're supposed to act in such a way that would not only honor and glorify God, but others could follow you. The Bible says, and I'm, and I'm done. <clears throat> Verse number 25. And when Moses saw that the people were naked, for Aaron had made them naked, uh, unto their shame among their enemies. Then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. And he said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Put every man his sword by his side, and go in and out from gate to gate throughout the camp, and slay every man his brother, every man his companion, his, co his companion, and every man his neighbor. And the children of Levi did according to the words, word of Moses, and there fell of the people that day about 3,000 men. Hmm. According to verse 35, the Bible says, the Lord plagued the people because of what Aaron had done. Folks, tonight, I know we want the blessing of God, but when you and I step out of the way of God, we cannot expect the blessing of God. If anything, we'll expect God's judgment. God loves you and I enough that he's not going to let you go and worship whatever God you want. He just won't. Folks, we live in a world that there's so many idols, so many other things that will take you away, take you out of the way of God if you and I are not careful. It could be any kind of idol that takes you away from him. May tonight we fortify ourselves by the grace of God to help us stay in the way. So let's determine to serve him and him only. Let's be careful what we allow in our lives. 
In other words, as, as Solomon says, guard your heart, for out of it are the issues of life. And then without a doubt, may we worship God and Him only. Which means this, you ought to be in church, amen? You ought to have a private time with God on a, on a, on a daily basis between you and God. How come? What, what's so big about that? Let me tell you what's so big about it. It will help you to not only know your God, but will also help you to fall in love with Him. Why? Because there's the temptation. There are so many images out, in, out there in our world today that you could easily fall in love with Him. Especially if you're around Him a lot. And so, may we be careful. Let's all stand, every head bowed, every eye closed. <clears throat> the question was asked, or at least I asked the question, what would it take to get us out of the way? God said about the children of Israel, how quickly you got out of the way. How quickly. You know, it doesn't really make any difference what excuse that we have. God, well, the reason why I did, and, and we could have a story. We could all have a story. But the bottom line is this. We should never worship any other God. Never. And so as God knocks at our heart's door, the Lord knows how far or how close you are to him, the temptations that lie before you. Maybe tonight some of us need to find an old-fashioned altar someplace and ask God to protect you as you go to work and as you do the things you do because you know the temptations that are there. No one knows them like you do. Because you see them every day, you're around them, and you can, even, you can see the effects of what they're doing in your life or maybe in your marriage or in your thought life. How quickly we can get out of the way. So may we fill our lives up with God. May we fill our lives up with the Word of God. May we be around God's people. May we talk about godly things because we need it. Our pianist begins to play tonight. Father, I pray, help us all, Lord, to love you with all of our heart. And dear God, the only reason why we love you is because you first loved us. Lord, we even need help with that. Dear God, help us all to be faithful to you. And Lord, when we find ourselves doubting you, may we simply focus on you. Simply do what you say, trusting you every step of the way. Lord, help our weakness. May we be strong in you tonight. Have your will and way in this invitation. In Jesus' name, amen. Brother Miguel leads us in a verse of the invitation. Would you do business with the Lord tonight? Come on, as we sing. Just as What about it tonight? me come to sing would you come again come on just as 18 not to to thee whose blood can cleanse each spot what about it tonight I come. Well, I pray and trust you've done business with the Lord. May the Lord bless you tonight. You may quietly be seated.
Brother Tim's going to come. All right, we do have a few announcements and actually a couple new ones, so uh, listen up. Uh, there is a new nursery schedule that has been posted. Uh, it's on the window of the nursery, uh, if you'd like to take a look at that. And there's also some copies on the track table as you go out the, the door to the parking lot on the right-hand side where we have some tracks. There's actually a copy if you want to pick it up. Um, Mary Doble is going to uh, the Heart Hospital at Community North tomorrow. And on Tuesday, she is having heart valve replacement surgery. Uh, so remember uh, Mary as, as uh, she does this. Uh, remember all our others on the prayer list and the shut-ins as well. Uh, we also have our Wednesday night service at 7 p.m. Uh, before that, we'll have the Wednesday night dinner at 6 p.m. This week is Italian food. Uh, come out and join uh, for that. Cost is $5 uh, as we continue to raise money for uh, our flooring. Uh, men to Men and the Ladies Prayer Breakfast are both this Saturday at 9. Uh, we'll be eating together and then separate for the devotion time and uh, prayer time after that. Uh, and afterwards, at 11, excuse me, on that, on that day, the 11th, uh, they will be canvassing, passing out flyers uh, at a nearby neighborhood at 11 a.m. immediately following. It should only last about an hour. So if you can uh, come and, and help with that or stay and help with that, that would be great. Uh, March 17th, there's a youth activity. Uh, it's called Ignite. So I'm sure that means to try to get them fired up. Ignite for the teens at 6 p.m. here at the church. Uh, if you have any questions, see Brother Miguel. And then spring forward on your clock this Saturday night. I hate losing sleep, but uh, remember to spring forward, uh, move your clock forward, and um, uh, if you don't, you're going to miss out on Sunday school if you're not uh, if you don't do that. So make sure you move your clock forward. All right, I believe that's all. Unless anybody else has anything, all right, let's all stand and we'll be dismissed. Dear Heavenly Father, we again thank you for the opportunity to be in your house, Lord. We thank you for the word and the message that uh, you brought to us through our pastor, Lord. Continue to um, bless him and his ministry here, and Lord, just help us to uh, to strive to be the Christian that you'd have us to be. Watch over us and bless us. Be with the ones that are on our prayer list, and especially Mary this week. Uh, watch over her and protect her. Uh, bring us back at the next appointed time. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <laughs>